Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're again joined by Derek Binder to discuss all the new and returning assist trophies coming to Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS. So let's get right into it. Alright Derek, so we've already covered items, we've talked Pokemon, it's time to discuss assist trophies. And we saw several new ones in the uh, Smash Bros. Direct from a few weeks ago, and I thought we'd just go through them, give our impressions, and uh, you know, give a few more thoughts on how they may exactly work. And uh, one of the main ones, or at least for you, I think, that we saw, was a <laughs> Luckman, you know, from Mega Man. Now, since you're more of a Mega Man fan than I am, um, I figured, you know, uh, maybe you can describe better what exactly we're seeing with this guy. Well, he seems to pretty much work exactly how he did in the game, where he sends out uh, electricity bolts both forward, uh, above him, and below him. And uh, he might even jump around exactly as he did in the game. I haven't double-checked that uh, personally, but it seems to be the same general pattern. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a great callback to how we worked in the game, and uh, I, I think it's great to see him here. Do you think he is like the best choice for representation of uh, Robot Masters in Assist Trophy form? I do. I think he best represents the original uh, Mega Man uh, just almost perfectly, because that's he probably was the hardest one to fight, unless you had his weakness. Um, the only other one I can think of that is just as iconic and that hasn't been represented in some way... Uh, by Mega Man's moveset is Cutman, uh, who I don't know. I just he was always the first one I went after, so he kind of ingrained him, like ingrained in me is like I just kind of love the guy. But I think on the whole, Elect Man is the best choice. Um, I'm just curious how well his his lightning bolt that goes down is going to be in comparison to the one that goes forward and above because. I mean, I don't think he even saw it until he jumped, did you? No, I mean, I didn't even notice that he fired in all three directions until you mentioned it. And, you know, once you did, I you know, can clearly see that now. But, it, yeah, it strikes it strikes me as him being... It seems like he could be pretty annoying to deal with on the, you know, in a, in a battle. And I don't mean annoying in a bad way. Um, moving on, we have Skull Kid from, um, you know, Majora's Mask. And we actually saw him in picture form some months ago. Uh, in fact, he's actually what began our weekly discussions. <laughs> it was seemed like a really good time to kickstart it. Uh, now, we had some really grand ideas back then, and unfortunately, he does none of them. Like, what we see him do now is he gives out, like, a scream or a yell like he did in Majora's Mask during, um, at least the first time you see him. I think, you know, at other points in the game as well. And uh, in this case, it, it causes this screen to turn upside down. Just like one of the Pokemon that we see in this game as well. Um, Palkia. Yeah, just like that. So, you know, now, I don't know if there's more to this, perhaps, but my gut reaction to this is this is like the lamest possible thing they could have done to this guy. Um, you know, we back before, and I think as almost everyone predicted or hoped, he would, like, summon the moon. You know, and have the moon come crashing down or, you know, something along those lines. And instead, we just get a simple, you know, a simple stage rotation <laughs> yeah i mean i was just as disappointed as you uh everybody expected the moon to be there in some form i can kind of understand why they didn't use the moon because no, <laughs> no understanding <laughs> i mean it'd be it'd be a screen nuke he'd be one of the best assist trophies out there in, in the game almost guaranteed kill unless they decided to shrink the moon uh i i mean i don't know how else they would do it uh so I can kind of understand why they didn't do that way, but it still sucks because it's just a, it's just a stage flip. It's the same thing you see from Palkia, and it's nothing new. Yeah, and it just sort of loses the coolness of having Skull Kid equipped with a Majora's Mask in there. Yeah, it's like a massive waste of potential. It's it's. I mean, I would almost prefer they didn't even bother, but it just makes them seem like a really cheap addition now. Um, yeah, he, it's it's just it's just a bit of a bummer. I mean, I'm not it's, it's not tearing me apart, but it is <laughs> it is unfortunate. Um, now, I do agree. Had they gone with the moon and like it crashing into the earth, that seems like it'd be a pretty big problem. But what they could have done is have the moon like approach, like you know, get close, and that could just cause them havoc with the arena, whether it causing lower gravity because the moon's closer, or causing you know all kinds of stuff just to fly around, um, like you know, debris and other things. Because like when the when the when the moon crashes into the planet in the game. Um, or as it's getting close, you can see debris like flying up from the ground toward the moon. And they could have done something like that here. And then at the last minute before the moon actually, you know, crashes into the earth, which would be a big problem for the for the Smash Brothers <laughs> characters, um, you could have the giants appear like they do in the game, um, you know, if you finished it, and they could push it back into space. Um, and that actually would be very reflective of how the moon worked in um, the in the great, I think it was uh, the Great Bay Arena from Smash Brothers Melee. That would be, probably be the best case scenario about how this works, and maybe. 
maybe, just maybe, that is how it still works. I mean, maybe the moon's getting close and the stage flips <laughs> or, or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe gravity's getting turned upside down because the moon is so close. Yeah. I hope that's the case. Uh, I mean, it, it just seems like such a waste. It is. The only other reason I could think why they went this route is because maybe it means the Great Bay is back um, as an arena or as a stage in this game, um, which I quite enjoyed. Or maybe it means that there's another Majora's Mask stage in the game, you know, where the moon does play a feature in the game. Um, in which case, they, they couldn't use it in the assist trophy because it wouldn't make sense to have two moons, um, potentially. Just got to hope for the best, I guess. Yep, I'm with you. All right, moving on, we've got another Zelda assist trophy being Minda from uh, Twilight Princess. And in this case, we can, see, we can see she uses her, like, I don't know what it is, her, like, her, her hair hand, her, her hair <laughs> arm. Um, it's been so long since I played that game. And we can see she'll like swing it around and attack characters with it. Now, as we pointed out in our analysis though, for a single frame, it looks like she almost may actually be grabbing Kirby instead. And as it turns out, that's exactly what it is, because Sakurai recently confirmed on Miiverse that that is how she works. She'll grab an opponent and throw them. Now, we actually, uh, we actually discussed this pretty in depth in our uh, weekly discussion. But let's get your quick thoughts on this, Derek. It's a great representation of Minna. I think if you're going to have her do something, it has to be involved with a little hair hand, arm hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly a step up from what they did with uh, with uh, the Skull Kid. <laughs> That's for darn yeah. sure. All right. Uh, next up, uh, we've got a Chain Chomp from, of course, the Mario series. And he looks like he behaves pretty much just like in the games, where he's attached to a post, and he'll lunge out at anyone nearby as you see him lunge out at Mario. Um, and in fact, it looks like he's going to be pretty much immune to being attacked because Mario's fireballs go right into him. They, they have no, Or go right through him, in fact. They have no effect at all. So if he's anything like he is in the games, which it seems like he is, you know, exactly, I think it's going to be kind of a pain to deal with. <laughs> like, he's, <laughs> he's going to be a pretty big hazard out there. Because not only, I mean, he's got a pretty big, pretty broad range, and he's in, you know, he's pretty big as well. Um, but what's your take on this guy? Oh, I love it. Uh, you know, this is a great idea for an assist trophy. I, I mean, I didn't even think about him being a, being a possible assist trophy. Yeah, And either. he works so well. And I kind of hope they bring in that other sort of staple of him where players can get behind him and like gra like attack his little stake that puts it that keeps him in place. That way he can actually get farther away and attack all in all directions. Yeah, that would be awesome. So how do you think you would free him exactly though? Like would you just jump onto the post or like, or would you have to smash it with a with a hammer attack or something, like King Diddy? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing probably just attack it, because not every character ha uh, has, you know, a hammer or anything like that. Right. So, uh, it probably is just regular attacks if they allow for that to happen. I'm, you know, there's no guarantee of that any, uh, at any point. And the thing, is, the thing that makes me think it might not work like that is because whoever unleashed it could make this thing even more powerful powerful by getting you know they can just walk right up to the chain chomp and hammer it down so if they want to make it if they want to add that ability i almost think that whoever summons him can also be affected by this assist trophy oh huh, yeah that's a good point um no i definitely like the idea of being able to free him and i actually kind of like the idea of maybe only some characters being able to do it like characters that have naturally a a uh, you know a move that causes a smashing thing you know, like hammers or kirby's um you know, stone transformation, for instance. Um, mm. Although that would probably be horribly unbalanced. But I think <laughs> it would be awesome if, you know, if whoever freed him you know, got the benefit, actually, of, of, of him going, you know, act then actively going after the other people who didn't free him, maybe. You know, like just lunging out or going wherever. Like just being like a really crazy item. Um, kind of like how he worked in, uh, in Double Dash, how he was just kind of a chaotic item. That, that everyone else wanted to get out of the way of. Oh yeah, uh, that's the that's the beauty of Chain Chomp is that he is just pure chaos once he's unleashed. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, moving on, we have a, a, to me a pretty surprising one, um, being Dark Samus uh, from Metroid Prime Three, I believe, and we can see her use a couple of different phase on attacks, as I recall. Um, you know, she shoots her gun a few times, and then she also does this like tentacle move where a bunch of tentacles, phase on tentacles, appear around her. Um, you know, presumably damaging anyone in that vicinity. Uh, so yeah, this one totally caught me off guard. Um, I, I think it's a cool addition. I, it's something I pretty much completely forgot about. That would have never occurred to me. <laughs> um, so I think this one's pretty neat. What's your take? No, I think it's an excellent choice. I mean, you didn't really, you kind of forgot about Dark Samus when it, you have uh, Metroids in there, and we just, you know, we found out about Mother Brain, which we'll talk about, you know, pretty soon. Yeah, next. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. But. Uh, 
No, I think it's. I think she's a good choice because she is. She is kind of iconic. I mean, she is one of the more common Metroid enemies and pretty much represents the Prime series. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that's interesting to me is that she seems to work a lot like uh, Knuckle Joe or Saki, right. where she has multiple attacks that she can use and probably does use them based on her positioning. It's cool to see that they have multiple options for how she'll attack, so you mm -hmm. really have to stay on your toes with her. Yeah, uh, without question. Um, now, I do wonder, randomly, it's a super stupid thought, but, like, what <laughs> if, um, th th does this mean that Samus won't have a Dark Samus color palette available in the game? Because I don't see how she could, if, uh, maybe she could, I don't know, this would only appear rarely, of course, but... <laughs> yeah, you never know, it's, I mean, there's, fortunately with, I mean, as awesome it would be to have that kind of palette, I mean... Samus has had a lot of different color suits over the years. <laughs> now, another assist trophy we have from Metroid is Mother Brain. Now, we've already talked about this one before, too, because we saw it in pictures, but this time we see it in motion as well. And we can see I'll fire this... Uh, I'm sure it has a name. I don't remember exactly. But this mm -hmm. giant laser beam, essentially, uh, you know, into the arena, and it'll ta damage anyone in its path. And it seems like it'll span a pretty a pretty broad... or a pretty large chunk of the arena, as it covers most of um, uh, Pyrosphere here. So, now, my question, though is it does it just fire in a random direction or does it actively target characters because we can it almost looks like it targets samus here but it's hard to say for sure no i remember watching that as well and the impression i got from it is that it sort of like just goes up and down on its own but as soon as you enter that general vicinity it will immediately lock on to you so it's not like based on where the that's positioned it's just sort of a indicator of like this is mother brain's range as right. soon as you get into that range your ass is getting hit because <laughs> <laughs> um, you notice i believe also in that footage um the character gets knocked out of the path and she immediately stops so there is a limit to where she is so you just have to stay out of that path and maybe even just get behind her mm -hmm. uh if depending on where she gets summoned from um but of course she also has the little rings coming out as well to attack people who do get behind her, I assume. Oh, that's a good one. That would be interesting, because, yeah, as as is, it seems like you know, just getting behind her would be the, the main thing. It really is just like luck of the draw. If you're on the wrong side of Mother Brain, <laughs> you're going to get hit, hit pretty hard, probably. But if you can get on the other side, it's not too bad. So there is a bit of balance here with this assist trophy. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, now, speaking of being on both sides, we have uh, an assist trophy in which it looks like it's basically impossible to, <laughs> um, being the Color TV Game 15. Uh, in which two paddles, it's basically Pong, right? So two mm -hmm. paddles appear on either side of the stage and they bounce the ball back and forth. And it seems like that ball is going to be the thing you want to avoid um, because we can see it knock, it will knock anyone who hits it or gets hit by it in, in, in the opposing direction. Um, now it's hard to tell if it's, or actually I guess we can see uh, how much damage DK took here and he was at like 80% I think beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if the knockback is a result of that or if it's just going to be a pretty high knockback in general from the ball. I'm guessing it's probably. I'm guessing the ball is pretty going to be pretty powerful, um, so you're going to want to you know get out of the way of it. Um, so this 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 one totally again. This is probably the most off the wall one here in general. Um, I never expected them to reference this ever, <laughs> and I think it's pretty cool that they are. I I never really knew about this. I mean, you know, everybody's aware of Pong, but I never realized that Nintendo had its own version of Pong, or own thing that could play Pong. I mm -hmm. mean. I know my gaming history pretty well, but this one just slipped my mind, and it's so awesome to get like the original game right. into Smash Brothers. Um, yeah, like this, this is this is preceding even Mr. Game and Watch time. <laughs> like this yeah. is this is old school. Like the only way Nintendo could top this is that they had some like the Love Hotel reference, or <laughs> um, you had or had playing cards in here, which would be a little bit of a safer bet. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that'd be awesome to have the Hanafuda cards be in there. Right, that'd be pretty. I don't know what they could do with them, but I'm sure they could come up with something. Anyway, back to the palm guys. Right. Uh, no, it's interesting to me that the ball is the one thing that you have to look out for um, because the paddles don't actually do any damage to you, but they do bounce you back and forth, so they work as they are. So they can be they're more of a hazard once you get thrown off the stage, mm -hmm. not really uh, in the in and of themselves. You gotta watch out for the ball. So there's a lot of layers to this one and I kinda like it for that. Yeah, the interesting thing is because we do see DK he hit the paddle too after being hit by the ball. And we can see that the paddle doesn't actually inflict any damage to him directly, but it does slightly divert where he's going. Um, so it seems like you may have to watch out for those paddles too if you're like coming back to the arena after being you know knocked out 
Um, or even if you're just trying to avoid being attacked and you want to, you know, uh, jump outside the arena for whatever reason. So yeah, it does seem like there are, this, this one's really interesting and it, um, probably one of the more interesting ones we think we've seen actually. Now the next assist trophy we've seen before and we've even talked about pretty in depth in a previous discussion and in our analysis, but uh, we see Isabel from Animal Crossing New Leaf is going to be here. Um, which is pretty cool on the face of it just because it is a Animal Crossing New Leaf reference, which is a pretty recent game, especially for American gamers. And, uh, you know, Isabel has quickly become a fan favorite, it seems. Um, now in this case, it looks like she'll throw, she'll throw a fruit into the arena, um, that presumably will heal anyone that picks it up. And in fact, it looks like she specifically targets, um, what we're guessing is a person that unleashed her, because it looks like she actually throws a fruit at, at a specific player, and in fact, at one point she even throws fruit over another player to reach, to reach another one. Um... So, yeah, I don't know. This is kind of interesting because it's a recovery assist trophy as opposed to being one that actively attacks everyone else. Yeah, and what's probably the most interesting thing about it is is the fact that she does target you. Um, you know, usually for this type of stuff, it's so, sort of random and you got to rush to get it. But with having uh, Isabel there constantly healing you, I mean, I can't imagine that being, you know, high healing items, maybe a little bit more than a food item. Mm -hmm. But still, that's consistent healing that you're going to get from her and i don't know it's 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 different in a way it's it's similar to other stuff but it's also different and i kind of like it for that yeah no i'm with you and what's really interesting about her is how it, it, it seems like she's playing even a larger role in uh, in, in interactivity than a lot of the trophies do i mean by one by you know targeting um an individual but also at one point we can actually see her dodge out of the way or so it seems it's possible they just time that perfectly so she's just stepping back when it looks like a dodge but i'm pretty sure she's actually dodging out of the way of an attack which is which is just a really cool touch um so i think that'll please a lot of people who you know are super into animal crossing who are still in animal crossing next up we have ashley from the warrior wear series and this uh you know again we discussed her before uh, but before we had no idea how she was going to work and this time we actually get some idea and it appears she'll create like this magic cloud that causes uh, apparently random status elements not on a per cloud basis but on a per character basis because in this case it looks like it shrinks Fox and causes King DDD to move way slower than he normally does so in essence it seems to be functioning very similarly in concept to um, oh, I forget what it was called but Luigi's Final Smash basically um, mm -hmm. where it, it basically had the exact same result uh, so I think it's cool. It actually makes a lot more sense for it to be an Ashley attribute than a Luigi attribute. <laughs> uh, what's your take on this one? No, I agree. I mean, uh, I believe it was Luigi's negative zone was the, fun what was the name was of the it. final yep. smash. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that if it is the case and it acts just like that, that gives even better evidence that Luigi's final smash will be different. But as far as the eff effect itself, uh, I... I kind of like it because if you listen to her theme, long, uh, theme song, she's like, I have new, put a hex on you. Grandma's wig, this will make you big. You know, th th she does talk about ran random status effects. So maybe right. it won't even all be bad. Maybe she'll speed some people up. Maybe she'll make them big. Uh, you know, it, it really could be truly random rather than just all negative effects. And it makes sense given that we know Luigi's Final Smash is different too. So that actually covers it for all the new assist trophies shown in the Smash Direct itself. Um, we actually got pictures of several others, some of which we're not entirely sure are assist trophies or items, and so we actually talked about them in our item discussion, but I wanted to talk about them again, um, treating them as assist trophies. And first up, we have the, uh, the Kukus from Zelda. And uh, now we've already talked actually about them a lot before in a previous discussion, so we'll probably just touch on it quickly. But um, as an assist trophy, what, what we've, you know, as we thought before, um, I presume they would appear, at least one, and whoever attacks it might summon like just the hellfire of of these <laughs> all these uh, of all these cuckoos. So I think it'd be awesome if like you know as we've discussed before, um, if you could pick up a cuckoo, throw it at an opponent, or throw it at maybe a pair of opponents attacking, and whoever ends up attacking it is what summons the cuckoos, and they just all go for that one guy. Um, <laughs> I think it's just gonna be a really fun a really fun item, and I hope they do something along those lines. But it'd be kind of a waste otherwise. Now that makes sense for how it would work as an item, but I think more as an assist, if it becomes an assist trophy, it probably is very basic where one sort of shows up and maybe walks around a little bit. I don't know, maybe whoever attacks it first and then I, I don't actually know if it, how it could work as an assist trophy because because we only have that single one right. there. To me, if we get if it's more of an assist trophy, it, they would just immediately swarm as they you know as some other swarming uh, items do like. Um, the unknown from uh, past games, uh, right. as far as Pokemon. So, 
I don't know. Thinking about it more, the more uh, the more I do think it probably will be an item rather than an assist trophy. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. But I really could go could see it going either way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, who knows? And that goes for this next item here, or <laughs> assist trophy. See, I'm already messing it up. <laughs> uh, being the Bullet Bill, um, which we again talked about in our item discussion. And I really don't have many further thoughts on this. I mean, as I mean, if it appears in an assist trophy, presumably it will just launch from one side of the arena to the other. Um, maybe it will turn around. Bullet Bills don't usually do that. They do in some of the 3D games, so that, that could easily work here. Um, and maybe he would detonate if he runs into something, or maybe detonates at a set point. I'm really not sure. Yeah, the only new comment I can really add to that is some people suggest... I did see some comments suggesting that rather than just a Bullet Bill, maybe it summons a, uh, a Bullet Bill launcher. So it's not just one, but right. multiple coming out and uh, launching from there and then attacking whoever gets in the way. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it'd be a nice little uh, nod to the original, but yeah, as of now, we really have nothing else to add. <laughs> the only other thing to note is that the, the Bullet Bill shown here is actually pretty big. Um, because you can see, compared to the platform, he's at least like most of the character's size. Um, so he, he, he seems like it'll be a pretty big thing to avoid, at the least. <laughs> the next up, we have the Galaga Aliens. Now, they're kind of interesting for a few different reasons. One, they're not a Nintendo character, they're a Namco character. Uh, two, I'm not sure they're actually summoned as, as an assist trophy. But one idea we had before is maybe they're not actually an assist trophy per se, but they're like a Namco assist trophy. And they could be spawned from the, uh, from the Namco special flag we see, which is something that's been in a bunch of classic uh, Namco games. Um, what, what, what do you think about that? It's definitely going to be an assist trophy if the special flag theory is not true because right. there's no way these guys could work as an item. Uh, they would work as other third-party characters showing up, you know, as, you know, a Lechman and, you know, Shadow in the previous game uh, and just be another assist trophy that does their own sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's really up in the air whether they, how they work exactly. But what we do find interesting is that their attack seems to be like little waves. And the, the picture they show of them using that attack on Fox, it kind of looks like they're abducting him. Right. But I think it's actually just catching him in the air and sending him down. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Is, do you think they'll work like that? Or how do you think? Well, it makes. I mean, if they act like they do in the games, as I recall. I mean, they'd just be straight up attacking. Um, but I kind of like the abduction angle, just because it would be something different. I guess it'd be a little <laughs> bit like the uh, the beetle item in that in that sense. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I think I agree with you there mostly. But running with the idea of it, of the special flag being like a Namco version, I would guess that could mean other Namcos might or other Namcos, other Namco characters could appear as well. Like you know whether it's other classic Namco games, um, including maybe even Pac-Man. You know, as we've mentioned, we th we you know at least I think Pac-Man has a strong chance of being a playable character here. But if not, I feel like he would have to appear as a Namco assist trophy then. Um, mm -hmm. because he is such a memorable character, and if they did that, it would make perfect sense for him to reflect his classic appearance, um, especially since it would be in line with the classic appearance of the special flag. I think it would just make a ton of sense on a whole bunch of levels. Oh yeah, definitely. And if, if let's say, Pac-Man is a playable character, and, you know, this Namco flag does work, uh, the special flag does work as a Namco assist trophy type thing, um... I, they could still get representation from Pac-Man by putting in the ghosts. As, an, as sort of like Ooh, an assist item. That's a good and one. I think that'd be really cool to have the ghost just flying around and doing crazy things. So right. there's still a lot of potential here for what could actually be going on there. Yep, I'm with you. So in addition to all the new uh, assist trophies, we see some old ones as well coming back from Brawl. Like Starfy, uh, Knuckle Joe, the Nintendogs, which is awesome, um, Andross, <laughs> Dr. Wright from SimCity, you know, and several others like Samurai Goro. Uh, and he actually had a pretty prominent role in the Smash Direct. Um, so, yeah, it's good to see them back. Now, the interesting thing is uh, there are still quite a few that haven't been shown off yet, which is in stark contrast to the items, because pretty much every item from Brawl is coming back in some form, uh, with just a few exceptions. Whereas here, we have a bunch of unannounced ones not coming back, like, or rather, not announced yet to be coming back, like Barbara, uh, the Excite Bikes, um, Hammer Brothers, Tingle, Cat and Anna, and several others. Um, so I guess my question to you, Derek, is are there any here that you really want to see back in Smash Brothers Wii U and 3DS? You know, looking through the list, there are a couple that, you know, wouldn't mind seeing, like, the Excite Bikes or, you know, Jeff from Earthbound, um, you know, the Infantry from, uh, Advance Wars. Uh, I even enjoyed, I really enjoyed Cat and Honor from WarioWare. Um, but what's interesting to me is how many I wouldn't mind just seeing getting replaced in some way, yeah. like, uh... 
I mean, the Hammer Brother was cool, but I'd much rather have Chain Chomp and potentially even Bullet Bell as an assist trophy. The Hammer Brother is cool and all, but he didn't really have as much of a threatening effect as he did in the original games. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's there's a couple in here that, heck, I didn't even remember, like the Hellerin from uh, a Japan-only game called Kuru Kuru Kuren, which... I barely saw it. Apparently it created a platform for a short time, but I don't remember at all. Did you? No, I, I didn't either. Maybe if I saw it in action, I would remember it, but I have no recollection of it. I'm sure I saw it at some point, but yeah, no memory of it. And apparently the interesting thing about that one is it actually is, in a, is a rare assist trophy, which I didn't even realize that they could have different uh, rates of appearance. I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, so yeah, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of interesting in and of itself. Um, yeah, so for me, the only one I really care to see back... I mean, not that... Most of these I wouldn't mind seeing back in some form. So for me, Mr. Rossetti, I think, has to be back. Just I think he's hilarious, and I like how he covers the screen with, you know, his, uh... His random, uh... Like, his, uh... With his lectures. <laughs> and <laughs> that's something Dog already does as well. So it's not super original, but it worked in Brawl. I think it could work here. Now, the interesting thing here is there's at least one assist trophy I'm pretty confident we're not going to see back at all. And that's Little Mac. Because he's a playable character this time. <laughs> so, so I'm wondering is if they might replace him with another one from Punch-Out! Like, you know, another character, like King Hippo, or uh, you know, any number of the other um, bosses from the game. No, I think that's a question on everybody's mind, because you know, he is the one uh, assist trophy that graduated to full-on character status. Mm -hmm. And I think King Hippo is probably the best bet. I mean, he is, you know, the iconic Punch-Out! Uh, bad guy, uh, other than maybe Mike Tyson or some of the other, other ones. Um... But I think they might be able to, to even play a little bit with it, th this because, you know, we have uh, with Pokemon, with the Pokemon and the coming out of the Pokeballs, there's there's um, uh, Goldeen, mm -hmm. who doesn't do anything. So a part of me kind of wants Glass Joe to be in there. <laughs> that <would laughs> so he awesome. comes out and be, is like, he goes to punch you and he just, there's no effect whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that'd be hilarious. Just, yeah, just have him be a completely worthless assist trophy, basically. Yeah, where you can just take him out with, you know, not even a second thought. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be kind of funny. Uh, I, I'd i love to see Glass Joe in it, but I think King, King Hippo is the much more likely choice. Right. Yeah, I'm totally with you there. Now, along those same lines, I'm wondering, are there any assist trophies you would want to see here that haven't been, you know, shown off yet? You know, either, you know, in any game. Like, any anything you'd want to see as a new assist trophy here? Um, the one that came immediately to mind... Uh, like, in you you asked me about is the Man the best choice to represent uh, Mega Man, mm -hmm. and yes, in a way, but it's kind of crazy that because he's in there, I kind of wonder if we're going to get Proto Man or Base mm -hmm. in there as well. And you don't really know these characters um, that well, but basically, Proto Man is Mega Man's brother who shows up quite often in the games, and Base is Mega Man's rival. So these are two very prominent characters that have a lot of history behind him much more so than a Lech man so maybe these maybe one or both of them will show up as uh other assist trophies as well mm -hmm. or maybe they just got cut i don't know but i really hope to see them in there in some way yeah i think i think that'd be cool i mean it gets back to the whole i like any representation of more third-party characters for me personally i'm gonna have to go with the uh stunner race fx cars <laughs> because if, <laughs> if they can't be a playable character then i want them as an assist trophy and i could see them even taking like the place of um like the excite bike one right where the excite bikes just race across the arena do that mm -hmm. with the Stunner race fx cars i think it'd be awesome and uh i just love to see them you know represented here we've already gone so many obscure nintendo references um I feel like they're being shortchanged. It's almost like they're stuck in this nebulous area where they're not obscure enough to be referenced, <laughs> and they're not well known enough to be referenced, you know? So I really do hope that they show up in some form eventually. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're addicted. <laughs> I am! It's a good game! <laughs> and they're, they're little cars with eyes. Like, how is that not adorable? Like, they'd be awesome here. Um, now, you had an awesome idea when we were talking about this before, being for the Elite Beat Agents to be, uh, appear as an assist trophy. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, they've only had one game, so they're and they're way you know past their prime. I don't like. I don't know if we'll ever get another one of their games, but I mean, they're sort of it's they're sort of unique too because they're a uh, 
specifically created for the U.S. audience because mm -hmm. there was a different game that was in Japan, and I can, I'm blanking on the name of it off the top of my head right now, right. with a completely different set of characters. Yep. Uh, and they got a sequel in Japan, but again, never came to the U.S., and but they all played the same way. So I can imagine either those three guys or our elite beat agents maybe make an appearance and maybe like giving a buff to whoever they decide whoever uses them and you know because they're cheering them on and all that. That's an interesting point actually, the fact that there were different characters depending on the region. They could have each region have, you know, different characters, but now that I think about it, because it's online, they couldn't really. Um, mm -hmm. I mean I guess they could. They could just have, you know, if you're playing with someone in Japan, um, you could just they could just the appearance could just be different, but I doubt they would do that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I would love to see the Elite Beat Agents, but I'd even take the Japanese version uh, of the characters as well. Now, another idea we had before this was, I really, now, once you said it, I'm like, I really want this, uh, the Tetris blocks. Mm -hmm. We already got Pong in there. Let's get Tetris blocks in, in, in there and just have them fall in a certain section and, right. you know, they, they disappear when they complete a line. It'd be awesome, and I'd love to see him make an appearance as an assist trophy. Yeah, it would be awesome. Like, they could even, like, you could be squished by them, or maybe you could even use them as platforms, too, as they're dropping. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, they could just have, like, a few, you know, a few different blocks drop, and then, as it does, have the classic Tetris music playing. Oh, it'd be, it'd be so awesome. Um, though, I'd be totally down if they just made a whole arena for it, too. You know, whole whole Tetris themed stage. I don't know how they would do it, but it'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, as far as other assist trophy characters, I mean, it's my love of, of Professor Layton coming through, but I'd love to see him make an appearance. I have no idea what he could possibly do. Yeah. I mean, the only idea I really have is him using his hat like Odd Job from James Bond. <laughs> That'd mean, be pretty toss awesome. Toss that around. <laughs> Even if it doesn't match anything we see him do in the games, as far as I know. Oh, God, no. I mean, <laughs> he, I mean he can fence and stuff in the games and whatnot, but that's not what you think of when you think of Professor Layton. It's do all you, puzzles and stuff. Do you even see him without his hat at any point? Yes. That seems like, I don't know, I can't even imagine that. Like, I, that to me is just part of his body. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, there is a game where they actually show the origin of how he got his hat. <laughs> oh, wow. Crazy. Um, now, there is one other character, or one other assist trophy, I think. Um, at, least, uh, at least one of the franchise we'll see represented here as an assist trophy, which you mentioned, which I think it makes a lot of sense, being one from Kid Icarus. And, or Kid Icarus Uprising specifically, because we've already seen, um, you know, him, that that uh, series get a new stage. Pitt's gotten a few upgrades. We're pretty sure Palutena is probably going to be a character here, so it only makes sense to have uh, that series represented further with an assist trophy. And I think we agreed that Medusa probably makes the most sense. Now, I could really see um, any number of the gods appearing here. And I actually should mention that there are two Kid Icarus Uprising stages. I totally forgot about the 3DS one, even though I just mm -hmm. did an analysis for it. Yeah, Medusa is the, probably the biggest candidate, I would think. I mean, I know, I know I've seen some people like lobby for uh, Magnus, I believe his name is, to be a character. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could show up as an assist trophy, but I really think Medusa's going to make it. That way you can have the big three from Kid Icarus, uh, the Kid Icarus games being, right. you know, Pit, Palutena, and uh, Medusa. Uh, as far as what she could do, I'm not exactly sure, but I still think it would be cool to have that representation there. Mm -hmm. And especially with this being a Sakurai game, you know, we are going to get some sort of Kid Icarus trophy. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it, I think it's definitely a safe bet. The, the thing is about Kid Icarus Uprising is there are so many pretty interesting characters. They could go with any number of them. Um, but the thing is, I don't think you fight most of them directly, as I recall. So, whereas I think Medusa did have... Um, I forget how they... It's been so long since I played that game. But I, there is more source of material on which they could work off of, I think. All right, any other any other thoughts, Derek, at all? Any other characters we haven't talked about? I guess I, I really should mention... We forgot to mention him before, and I know Sonic fans are going to kill me for this. Uh, Shadow. He, he will probably be back as an assist trophy, working with his whole chaos control thing again. Um, you know, he is, you know probably the other big Sonic uh, character but I kind of hope as along with him they kind of bring in like Tails or Knuckles mm -hmm. as well but just because they're the other big side characters other than that um, I'm excited just to see who they bring back I really don't it's weird with assist trophies I really don't have too much of a preference I just sort of excited to see what they bring out yeah I guess for me it doesn't really matter that much either it's, it's weird um, it's probably the thing I care the least about I think just because like they, they appear so frequently because you already have the fact that assist trophies are already a single item, so they already appear not very often. And they add to that that any individual assist trophy isn't going to appear, you know, even less often on top of that. 
Um, so yeah, ultimately, like, the selection doesn't really seem to matter that much. All right, well, I think that wraps it up for our Smash Brothers Assist Trophy discussion, so thanks guys for watching. If you liked this discussion, make sure to like us and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at GameXplain. You can find links to them in the description below, and it's a good way to keep up to date with everything we post. And of course, keep an eye on GameXplain.com for much more Smash Brothers Wii U and 3DS and other things gaming as well. All right, thanks guys. Bye.